Before I start the review, I just want to say that I probably have a different method of judging movies compared to other people, because I judge them on a technical aspect, then I watch them again, and then I judge them on how much fun I'm having. The reason I bring this up is I feel as though if you're not a Scooby-Doo fan like I am, you're going to have a very different experience with this movie. To open this review, I just want to tell you my bias towards Scooby-Doo. It's one of my favorite franchises of all time. I love this franchise and almost every single incarnation of it. Everything from Where Are You to The 13 Ghosts to A Pup Named Scooby-Doo and my personal favorite incarnation of the gang, Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated. And even though I do have characters I dislike and incarnations of the show I dislike, it still holds a very close place to my heart. I felt like I needed to get that out of the way before I actually started the review because it kind of feels wrong to not tell you about my bias towards Scooby-Doo. Plus, the reason I'm telling you this is because if you're not a fan of Scooby-Doo, your views on this movie might be very, very, very different from mine. As both a critic and a fan of the franchise, this film left me very, very conflicted. On my first viewing of the movie, I hated it. But on my second viewing, I started to see the positives of this film. But I'm going to go over the negatives first. My first big gripe about this movie is Will Forte as Shaggy. And while I think everyone else did a good job in this movie, he's one of the only two actors I think did a bad job. The other being Mark Wahlberg. Because come to think of it, I don't think I've ever enjoyed Mark Wahlberg in a film outside of The Departed. My biggest problem with Shaggy isn't his performance whenever it comes to line delivery or inflection or timing. It's the Shaggy impression. He just doesn't sound like Shaggy. He is the least Shaggy sounding Shaggy to ever play Shaggy. It's like a bad impression you would find on YouTube. Now, this is not an attack on Will Forte himself because I actually do like Will Forte in shows like Last Man on Earth and Tim and Eric Awesome Show Great Job. Like, I do a pretty shitty Shaggy impression, but I think it's a thousand times better than Will Forte's. Like Scooby-Doo, my buddy old pal! Around, man! The clean, modern aesthetic, the cool blue color palette, we're in Ikea. the Falcon Fury! That, and I just think that Mark Wahlberg sounds a lot like Ryan Reynolds. Like, I cannot be the only one who thinks this. I think everyone else did a fine job Surprisingly, especially Zac Efron as Fred, he really embodied the character despite the lack of character. A very minor complaint about another voice actress is Gino Rodriguez as Velma, because Velma's always had this kind of higher-pitched, nasally voice, and Gino Rodriguez does not have that voice, even though I feel as people aren't getting as mad about that, because she's not as recognizable whenever it comes to voices as Shaggy. My next two big complaints with this movie are so similar, I just decided to talk about them at the same time. It's that, one, this movie doesn't feel like a Scooby-Doo movie, and two, this movie feels like a sequel to a movie that doesn't exist. Now, you can say all you want about how I shouldn't put franchises in a box and I should let franchises explore newer things. And I'm all for that, as long as they maintain that original spirit of the franchise. And Scoob does not maintain that original spirit of the franchise. It doesn't feel like a Scooby-Doo story. That and a big part of my dissatisfaction with the film is it expects you to know a lot about the Scooby-Doo characters, which is not surprising, but with every new reboot, you need to explain character dynamics, among other things. And this film really didn't do that. And if you're gonna use the excuse, well, everyone knows the Scooby-Doo characters, well, there's no doubt in my mind that in the future, this is going to be a lot of kids' exposure to these characters. So that's a major flaw for me. The reason this movie feels like a sequel 
is because it has a lot of big character reveals, like Dick Dastardly or the Blue Falcon. What should have happened is we should have gotten a movie where it's the Scooby-Doo gang solving their first mystery as teenagers or as adults, instead of showing them well into their prime starting a new business. Also kind of pisses me off how important Simon Cowell is to the story. Like, why the fuck is Simon Cowell so important to this fucking story? It genuinely gets on my nerves. The best way to describe this movie is like, imagine if the MCU just started with the Avengers. That is what this movie feels like. In terms of the cinematic universe they're trying to build off the Hanna-Barbera characters. They should have started with what I'm calling the Barbaraverse, with a movie just starring the Scooby-Doo characters instead of the Scooby-Doo characters and Wacky Racist characters and Captain Caveman. Like, in Iron Man, you didn't get introduced to Iron Man and Captain America and the Hulk and Thor and Black Widow. You just got introduced to Iron Man as the first superhero. We should have gotten just introduced to the Scooby-Doo gangs as the first main characters. And then, if they're going to commit to the whole cinematic universe thing and have a post credit sequence, then they should have shown, like, Dick Dastardly looking for the skulls or Velma uncovering the plot of Dick Dastardly and then coming into contact with the Blue Falcon. Overall, I think this is a very weak start to a cinematic universe I was personally very excited about. Again, I'm calling it the Barbaraverse because the Hanna-Barbaraverse, very, very mouthy and wordy and I don't like it. My last big disappointment in this film was the story itself. What the hell did any of it have to do with Hanna-Barbera or Scooby-Doo or Wacky Races or the Blue Falcon or Captain Caveman? Why was Alexander the Great and his dog mentioned in this movie? Or was such a big deal in this movie? They could have kept the story and just cut out Alexander the Great and then made up an excuse like, oh, throughout time there have been the reincarnations of the protectors of the gate. And then they could have tied even more Hanna-Barbera characters into the movie. Like, just off the top of my head, the first incarnation of the Keepers of the Gate was Fred Flintstone and Dino. Because Dino's basically a dog, and plus, the Flintstones are Hanna-Barbera characters, so it makes sense, makes more sense than Alexander the fucking Great and his dog. Am I wrong? The answer is no. Another small complaint is the robots that Dick Dastardly uses, because they feel like they're trying to make the minions again, and no one wants that. No one wants another minion. Like, seriously. Stop. Please. Please stop. For the love of God, PLEASE STOP! Now it's time to talk about the positive aspects about this movie. Let's start off with the opening. I like the opening, despite the weird time placement because young Shaggy has a smartphone but someone's carrying a boom box, playing California Love by Tupac. That's confusing, but I do love the character introductions to Shaggy and Scooby and where they first meet. I think it that's genuinely heartwarming. And then I also like the introductions to Scooby and Shaggy to Fred and Velma and Daphne. I thought that was very well done, and it felt like Scooby-Doo. That very much felt like Scooby-Doo, including them creating almost a frame-by-frame -frame, um, introduction with the theme song. I really enjoyed Tracy Morgan as Captain Caveman. I thought that was going to fall flat on its face, but it didn't. I thought he did a really good job. Sure, it's nothing like Mel Blanc's original Captain Caveman voice. It's speaking proper English, just with some made-up words. But I think he did a really good job, especially the bar I set with him. Like I said, Fred and Daphne, surprisingly good. And I like the sidekick they gave Blue Falcon along with Dynamite. I thought Dee Dee was very good. I liked her as a character. That's who fucking Blue Falcon should have been. I like the atmosphere of this movie and the look of it. A lot of the sound effects does add to the atmosphere of it feeling like an old Hanna-Barbera cartoon. Sure, it doesn't feel necessarily like a Scooby-Doo cartoon, but it does feel like a cartoon from that era. So that's a big plus. I did really like the closing credits scene. 
just because we got to see a lot of Hanna-Barbera characters. If the next movie in this franchise they introduce is Jabberjaw, I'm going to be through the roof because I also love Jabberjaw. In short, this is still a very conflicting movie to me because there's a lot I like and there's a lot I hate, but it's still a weak start to the Barbaraverse. I think that's the biggest takeaway is they need to step up their game over at Warner Brothers. So what did you think about this movie? Did you hate it? Did you like it? Were you kind of met on it? Did you think it was better than the two live action movies from the early 2000s? Did you think it's better than a lot of the straight to DVD stuff? Did you think it's better than any of the series? Tell me in the comments below, I like discussion. If you liked the video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. I have a question for you guys. What should I review next? The two Scooby-Doo movies from the early 2000s? The two straight to Cartoon Network Scooby-Doo movies? Or Detective Pikachu? Comment below.